the off the bat uh, reaction to that announcement by Moody's. We did see it coming. James, the market has been speculating all this week. Uh that we will see a downgrade in terms of the French banks and the speculation has really been centering around three of the French banks, Saudi General, Credit Agricole and BNP Paribas. Now we have seen a one notch downgrade to two out of three of those French banks, Society General and Credit Agricole and as you can imagine it is because of their exposure to Greek debt. BNP Paribas is still on review but one thing we've seen this week out of Society General as well as BNP Paribas is the selling of assets and that's what our BNP Paribas has really come out within the last 24 hours. So still on review, it is probably likely that we are going to start to see recapitalizations flow through. And of course, these banks have absolutely been smashed um, in the past month. They have been on review since June 14. And I guess markets reacting uh, to the possibility of a downgrade this week because overnight, once again, we saw those European banks having heavy downturns. I suppose Michael and Henry alluded to that uh, Asia Development uh, Bank, that downgrade. I think the forecast now to grow of about 7.5 percent. I mean, did that rattle investors? 7.5 percent was down from what 7.8. It's still pretty, pretty good growth. I guess some of the comments coming through from the Asian Development Bank were being very closely watched as well. If we have a look at their forecasts, they have downgraded from 7.8% in 2011 down to 7.5% and next year from 7.7% once again down to 7.5%. I guess the theory doing the rounds is that China is going to save the world if we do see a slowdown in Europe and the US that possibly global growth will be okay because of China. But we've been through this argument before through the global financial crisis, the whole decoupling argument. And we certainly found that it wasn't the case uh, two or three years ago and it probably isn't the case now. If we have a look at China, about 35% of their economy still contributes to exports and their two biggest export markets are Europe as well as the US. So I guess this uh, forecast from the Asian Development Bank really putting in focus that Asia is not immune from what's happening around the globe. I think the market today was all about Europe though. Those there was three things that the market was watching. First of all, the Asian Development Bank, as Henry mentioned, did freak the markets out around about 11 a.m. And we saw a number of comments coming out of China. And that's the other thing that the markets have been watching. We did see Premier Wang Zhoubao really not adding anything new to the rhetoric that we've, we've heard all this year. But we've also heard some other comments coming through a former advisor at the central bank saying do not buy single country European bonds. And we did see also a P, uh, the People's Bank of China advisor coming out to say well China needs to get their own policies right before they go and help any other countries as well. So I guess this just demonstrates the uncertainty in the markets at the moment. And when you do see markets uncertain you're unlikely to see a bullish trend emerging. In fact if we go to the the one-year chart of the Australian market now. This is what it looks like. And we've now seen a clear downtrend emerging, lower lows, lower highs. So it does look like the Australian market currently in a downtrend. So we have seen that downtrend being established. And of course, all of it's really about Europe, that Moody's downgrade of Society General and Credit Agriculture certainly not helping. Trying to find some sort of silver lining with the uh, S&P ASX 200, just five points above that, I suppose, psychological 4,000 level. The Aussie dollar very close to parity again. Could we start to see some of that foreign investment, that foreign uh, investor buying into our market to maybe post some big gains? Unfortunately, when you see risk off, it's risk off across the globe and we are seeing very high levels of correlation. So in terms of the foreign investor, they'd be running for the hills right now. And that's why we see a sell off in things like the Aussie market, the Aussie dollar and uh, basically risk assets. It is I guess a global world now when we do see that risk off trade we see a pretty dramatic downturn in terms of markets. If we have a look at safe haven plays it's been interesting to watch gold today. Gold is currently down by 0.2 percent in US dollar terms and really the action has been in the currency markets today. Gold is down in US dollar terms but no doubt that would, there would be a lot of bidding and a lot of demand in uh, in the euro. So if we have a look at gold in euro dollars well that has been on a very strong uptrend and gold in Australian dollar terms also doing well. In fact, if we have a look at the gold ETF, one of the few things to rise today up by 1.9%. But investors very firmly focused on safe haven plays and that meant for stocks back into uh, defensives like Telstra, which managed a rise of 0.7%, and Woolworths, which managed a rise of 0.4%. But all across the market, it was selling across the board. In fact, if we have a look at the top 100, we only saw 12 stocks managing a rise there. And the stocks which got beaten down the most are those that are exposed to the market. If you have a look at Macquarie Group, down by a uh, down by 3.7% today. In fact, Macquarie Group reaching a two and a half year low. 
this volatility in the market. Certainly not good news for its business. The other stock we saw with a sharp fall today was Cochlear. We saw its stock down by 14.5% and that's because Sonova, one of its main competitors, has received uh, FDA approval in the U.S. So that was seen as coming at a pretty bad time for Cochlear when it's made a product recall. So one of the sharp uh, down movers of the day. But altogether, risk aversion very much in play. And unfortunately, that's not good news for the Australian market or the Aussie dollar.